Now the Bible that you get so dewy eyed over is one of the greatest pieces of propaganda ever written. If you want to read the Bible, why don't you read the Bible one day and read Mein Kampf the next day and see the comparison? That's hard on your mind. Because you think if you don't have Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, you don't have to have spirituality. I've got more spirituality after I put all of them down. And I've got more religion after I put all of them down. Welcome to Truth Africa series, Unapologetic and Truthful. I am your host, Yemi Melikaya. There's a whole lot of illusion about our relationship to the religions in the world. And these belief systems that had its origin in Africa, all of them, and there is no exception, turned on African people. I said there is no exception. And there's one thing you have to get through your mind and keep it. Nothing that ever came from the European mind was meant to do anything but facilitate European domination of the world. And I said there's no exception. <laughs> Everything that was brought into this continent Everything, every idea, every so-called religion <laughs> was meant to dominate and to control. The Arabs had no illusions about it. The Europeans had no illusions about it. You were the ones with the illusions. And yet every element that went into the making of every major religion in the world started in Africa. Why is it that you are so naive, you let people redress something that you invented, sell it back to you, and enslave you through it? I'm saying that all organized present religions are male chauvinist murder cults, and I say there is no exception. Price. Dr. Hendrick then goes to show why Africa had and will always continue to be the price. Why these foreign religious beliefs have always been targeted at Africans who had always thought they had friends in strangers. Our relationship with the people of the world and the fact that we created peaceful nations that had no word for jail because no one had ever gone to one. No word for old people's home because no one ever threw them away. Grandma and grandpa. No word for orphanages. We did all of this and over half of human civilization was over before we knew that a European was in the world. Before he wore a shoe or lived in a house that had a window. Now Africa has always and still is the prize for the whole world. We as a people have always been the world's richest people, culturally rich, mineral rich. We have always been the prize because we have always had and still have something that other people won't think they can't do without and don't care to pay for. Because we have always been the prize, we have been under siege for over 3,000 years. Nothing that ever brought into Africa from the outside was meant to do the African any good. That means all other religions. Islam was the handmaiden of Arab imperialism. Christianity was the handmaiden of European imperialism. The Hebrew faith was the handmaiden of a concept called the chosen people. Now, if God is kind and God is merciful and God has no stepchildren, he won't choose one over the other. And to say he chose some people, you're making him a bigot. And to say that he endorsed enslavement of one people over the other, you're making him an accessory to murder. The Arabs used Islam to rationalize their slavery and their imperialism. The Europeans use Christianity to rationalize their slavery and imperialism. Who are you kidding about friends in the world? Damn it, if you want a friend, look in the mirror. Mind programming. 
Dr. John Clark then dives to the truth about mind programming and brainwashing, emphasizing why Africans have no friends and that the point of all organized religions was to prey on Africa and do away with African belief systems that were 10 times better. Why are you buying third-rate junk from third-rate people thinking you can't make it? Why don't you at least make a safe depend on your child's diaper together? Teach. Who has programmed your mind to thinking you can't make a car? The first man that made a car that had never seen one previously. Teach. The Japanese bought cars, bought locomotives, broke them down and studied them and had a Japanese technician produce each piece, put it together and had a much better train than the one they copied from. Uh -huh. All knowledge in the world belongs to everybody in the world. Yes. Who has programmed our mind in assuming that we cannot run a nation and run it well? The main thing imperialism did, slavery and imperialism, they removed African people from the respectful commentary of history. And they tell them something they are still telling them, and all of the organized religions are guilty of this. I favor none of it because Africa didn't need any of it. I'm saying that African belief systems, properly understood, is 10 times better than Judaism, Christianity, and in Islam. And better for the Africans. Now you might have some romance with one of these religions. I have no romance with any of them. I have a romance with reality and truth. And the chips can fall where they may after I tell it. As for friends, you have had no friends. When they discovered you, they began to prey on you. No favors. Dr. Henry Clark uses examples to show how different communities from which this religion came moved to Africa with an intent of harm, further proving his point that however hospitable Africans were to the wrong strangers, none ever returned the favors. Now let's look at our relationship with Western Asia, mistakenly called the Middle East. For 3,000 years, our greatest enemies came from Western Asia. They were trying to avenge the fact that they were once African colonies. You read a book called When Egypt Ruled the East, and you get some of the basic information on this. Now, the first visitors to Africa came in the 1700s BC. These were the people who would later be called Hebrews. Now, black people are ticklish on this because black people think that everything in the Bible is true. I question the intelligence of anyone who thinks everything in the Bible is true or supposed to be true. <laughs> it's allegory, told, stories told to illustrate a point at a time when there were very few people reading books. And most of what you went into the making of the Bible was copied from Egyptian texts. Now, if you want to get so dewy-eyed over the Bible, which is, which is a carbon copy of a carbon copy, why don't you go back and read the original the Egyptian text? <laughs> then you see where all these stories started from. You see where the story of the Exodus started from. Now, you get so dewy-eyed, you actually think there was an Exodus. These people walked into Africa. Why couldn't they walk out? Why did they have to go by sea? No. Why did they see at the park? If you read Egyptian literature, you will discover that the whole story of somebody parting the sea started with about 3,000 years before the Hebrew entrance. I should not use the word Hebrew entrance before the entry from Western Asia. Now let's get one thing straight because black people are confused about all religions. Now, I'm not against any religion. I'm a very spiritual human being. I just don't need a preacher to preach no Ten Commandments to me when he's a backslider going with some, sister, some other man's wife. I'm intelligent enough to pick from the Ten Commandments, not commandments anyway. 
for the omission of purity at the great school at Luxor, Luxor, the great African training school. All right, now, let's get into this Western Asia. I'm saying that the people who came from Western Asia escaping famine did not have any Hebrew faith when they came into Africa. And there's no record of a Hebrew faith before theirs. Why is it that when they left Africa in the so-called Exodus, they had all three? African culture, an African religion, and an African language. Now look at the origin of the so-called people you now refer to as Jews. And you're mistaken using that reference because the word Jew is of European origin. And the people in Europe who call themselves by their name have no relationship to the biblical people of the Hebrew faith. And I'm saying that the people we now call Jews entered world history with their visit to Africa. And when Africa was invaded, 1675 BC, instead of joining the Africans who had been, been, that been their beneficiary and saved them from starvation, they joined the enemies of Africa. No one has ever turned, returned any favors to us. As a people, we have always been hospitable to strangers, mostly the wrong strangers. Conclusion Dr. Clark encourages us to find African solutions to our African problems, lest we go back into slavery. And what we have to understand now, in the period of superior brainwashing, is that there is no European answer for African problems. Either Africans find a solution to African problems or there is no solution. And if you don't find a solution soon, you go back into slavery. We have to stop all of this nonsense about who belongs to what religion when all of them were imposed on us in the first place. We stop all this fight between Muslims and Christians when neither one of the religions are doing them any good or moving them toward, religion, toward, toward, toward independence. All of them are handmaids of conquerors. All of them are religions of conquerors. We were naive when we accepted their interpretation of something that we had all along. I'm saying we need, we need to take a good look at ourselves. I'm not talking about building churches. I'm not talking about getting rid of religions. Understand me well. I am saying that every single thing that touches your life, religious, socially, and politically, must be an instrument of your liberation or you must throw it into the ash can of history. <laughs> Develop a liberation Islam. Yes. And if you develop a liberation Islam, you have to turn on the supreme slave traders who were in the slave trade a thousand years before the Europeans, the Arabs. Yes. And most brothers who think they're Muslims are merely Arabists. <coughs> Forerunners, vanguards of Arab propaganda. The Arabs are not above joining the Jews against black people. In America, they're already doing it in Detroit. In America, they're already doing it in real estate. You got some do it, I think, that you got a friend. I still ask you to look at that mirror. And if nothing staring back at you is friendly, then you got no friend. <laughs> but this is why you start friend. All right. I'm saying something which you need to reconsider. I'm saying that everything that came into Africa, every people that came into Africa, did not come to do Africa any good. Everyone and every religion and every people who came into Africa declared war on African cultures. They began the bastardization of African people, created confused mulatto who didn't know whether he be loyal to his mother's people or his father's people. That confusion is still here. The fascination for the color of the conqueror and the fascination to go to bed with the conqueror. Now that's wrong and mean, but it's true. Now, 
Some time ago, a North African leader, Gaddafi, was sending some Libyans to study in Europe. And he told them what any good nationalist would tell students going to study. I'm not sending you to Europe to find a wife. I'm sending you to Europe to gain the technology to come back and make Libya a strong nation, a strong Islamic nation, and a strong Arab nation. And you cannot achieve any of this between the legs of a European woman. <laughs> When is somebody going to get strong enough to tell Africans going to school, you going to come back home and pair up with a sister, but if you want to pair up over there, stay over there. The colonization of Africa was not just about political control. It also aimed to reshape African societies in the image of the colonizers. One way this happened was through religious imposition. European powers, driven by a belief in their cultural and religious superiority, sought to convert Africans to Christianity, often suppressing indigenous religions in the process. This cultural assimilation served to consolidate control and legitimize colonial rule. Religion has often been an instrument used to maintain power and control over populations. In the context of Africa, Religion was used as a tool to justify economic exploitation and the subjugation of Africans. Missionaries preached the superiority of European Christianity, portraying African religion as primitive or demonic, and using this narrative to justify colonization and the extraction of Africa's resources. The conversion of Africans to foreign religions was also strategic for maintaining political and social control. By imposing their religions, colonizers sought to weaken traditional societal structures including indigenous spiritual practices which often played a significant role in governance and cultural identity. Conversion to foreign religions served to alienate Africans from their traditional roots, making them more submissive to colonial authority. Education played a crucial role in the spread of foreign religions across Africa. Missionaries established schools and provided education that was often tied to religious indoctrination. Through these educational institutions, the values, beliefs and practices of the colonizer were imposed on young Africans. Perpetrating the circle of religious conversion and cultural assimilation, the legacy of imposed foreign religions continues to shape African societies today. Many Africans have embraced foreign religions and incorporated them into their cultural identities. However, this has also caused tensions and conflict with indigenous religious practices and traditional values. The ongoing struggle for religious freedom and the revitalization of indigenous beliefs is an important aspect of African cultural resurgence. The imposition of foreign religions on Africans must be understood in the context of colonialism, cultural assimilation, and the desire for control. As we reflect on this history, it is essential to acknowledge and respect the diversity of religious practices and beliefs within Africa. By recognizing the value of African spirituality, we can foster cultural appreciation, tolerance, and support for the revitalization of indigenous religions. And here you have it guys, kindly share your opinion in the comment box below and do not forget to like this video so YouTube can share this video with more people like you. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.